In this video, I wanna take a look at the array which is underlying the slice. So we have a slice and then we have the underlying array. And um, a slice is actually a data structure that has three parts to it. And so the slice, has, the three parts are a pointer to an array, and we'll learn about pointers in a, in a future part of this course, but a pointer is basically an address where something is stored in memory. And so it's the address where some array is stored in memory. So a slice has three parts, that pointer to an array, an address of an array, which is the underlying array where the data is actually stored. And then it has the length of the slice and it has capacity, which is the capacity is the length of the array. So a slice has three parts to the data structure, a pointer to an underlying array, a length, which is the length of the slice and a capacity, which is the third part there, <laughs> and the capacity is the length of the array. Those are the three parts, pointer, length, cap, pointer, length, cap. And so I wanna explore that underlying array and just kinda of take a look at it. And in particular, I wanna look at that in relation to uh, using a pinned. So I'm gonna to go to the Golang Playground. And uh, it's just kind of interesting to start thinking about. And good to know about so that when you have things kinda of go a little bit wonky, you understand, oh, that's, something related to that underlying array. So we'll create a new uh, slice event. And I'll put some numbers in it. Ten numbers. And, uh, and then we could just print that out and uh, see what it does. Make sure we got that all right. Cool. And then if we wanted to, we could use a pen. And for this, I'm going to do y equals a pen. So we'll assign this to y just exploring this. And we're gonna append to y x, uh, take, you know, so if we look at the built-in function append, so we're at godoc.org built-in, and this is where we have that built-in function append. If we look at that and read this documentation, let me zoom in on it. The pen built-in function appends elements to the end of a slice. First of all, just look at this here, the signature. A pen uh, takes a slice of some type, right? So that's how we denote that, those two brackets. And then it takes a variadic number of elements of that type. This is a variadic parameter. So an unlimited, from zero to unlimited, an unlimited number of elements of that same type. And it returns a slice of type, okay? So we're getting a slice of type back and we are assigning it to Y. We're assigning it to y. This is going to return a slice type, a slice of a slice of some type. It's going to return a slice of int, and we're assigning it to y. This takes a slice of some type, so we're giving it a slice of int, which means we can now put ints in here. You know, whatever ints we want, we could put them in there, and they're going to get appended, and uh, and we could print that out, format all that, and run it. So it added all that stuff. Cool, and assigned it to Y. Now, let's go back and look at built-in documentation. The append built-in function appends elements to the end of a slice. So appended these elements to the end of this slice. It has, if it has sufficient capacity, the destination is resliced to accommodate new elements. If it does not, a new underlying array will be allocated. A new underlying array will be allocated. So let's see what that's about. Green. So if we now print out our two slices, and I guess I no longer need that one, do I? Yeah, we'll leave it. Yeah, nothing's changed. Format, run. So here is uh, printing them out, here is X, and here is Y. So a new underlying array was allocated, right? 42, 43, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and then all that stuff. So that's really important. A new underlying array will be allocated. When is it allocated? If it has, let me zoom in on that for you. Uh, append built-in function appends elements to the end of a slice. If it has sufficient capacity, the destination is re-sliced to accommodate new elements. Let's highlight that in orange. Super simple highlighter, orange. 
<laughs> this mirroring is kind of wacky. Let me get rid of that. All right, there we go. Go away. And just make sure I'm recording. Cool. And that little red dot tells me I'm recording up there. So if it has sufficient capacity, the destination is resliced to accommodate the new elements. If it does not, a new underlying array will be allocated. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So here, a new underlying array, new underlying array allocated. So allocated means we allocated space and memory. Hey, use this memory. We're allocating this memory to store some stuff. Right, so that's also one of those words, allocated, initialize. First time I'm initializing memory, I'm allocating memory to store something there. So maybe replay that, right? But think about that, allocating memory. A new underlying array is allocated. So we allocated memory and we stored the data in memory. Um, cool. So that's, uh, that's that. And I'm gonna copy this, so I'm gonna hit share. And this is like starting to get into the intermediate, you know, category, pushing towards advanced stuff, but it's good to know about. So I'm going to copy that and put that into here, slicing uh, an underlying array, and uh, a new underlying array is allocated. Now let's, uh, let's go back and look at this other example. And in this other example, let me get back to pen, there we go. In this other example, if, if Okay, the pin built-in function and pins elements to the end of a slice. If it has sufficient capacity, the destination is resliced. So the destination is the slice, but the underlying array accommodates the new elements is what I'm trying to say. So the underlying ar array, we don't create a new array. So let's see that in action. So now, let's say instead of doing this, and this one is going to be the underlying array stores the new values. Instead of doing this, we could have x and we can unfurl it, but we're going to slice it. And so unfurl it is just my own word. I'm not sure what the correct word is, if there is one. I should look that up. All right, <clears throat> so we unfurl it and, uh, and we're getting all the elements here, but let's just say that we wanted to get rid of those. So we're going to slice this slice here. And for this first part, so we give this a slice, a slice of some type. For this first part, this is like deleting from a thing. We want 42 and 43. So from 0 uh, to 0, 1, 2, up to but not including 2, that will give us 42 and 43. 0, 1, but not 2. And then here, let's say that we want from 47 on. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from 5 on. And so that's going to give us... I'm going to take out for a second, or I'll comment out for a second, that one. That's going to, the underlying array stores the value of the new slice. So we haven't created a new underlying array. The current, the same, the same underlying array stores the values of the new slice. And that's just the way it works. It has sufficient capacity. The destination is resliced to accommodate the new elements. So seeing it in action is the best way. Format this, run it. And so we said we want 42 and 43, 42 and 43, and from 5 on, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from 47 on. So we got 47 on. Sweet. So that totally worked. We assigned it to Y. We printed it out. But now let's, uh, <laughs> let's see how that underlying array kind of got changed. <laughs> Boom. 42, 43, 47, 48, 49, 51. So look at those numbers right there, right? That is kind of interesting. So we created Y, and this Y is pointing to the same underlying array, and for that same underlying array, it changed the values of that underlying array so that the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are what it needs, right? It's what it needs. And so both X and Y are pointing to the same underlying array. And Y changed that underlying array. And so X is now changed. <laughs> that's interesting and good to know about. So that's a little bit, it might seem wonky, <laughs> right? But it's, uh, it's just a characteristic of the language. And it's something that 
you need to know about, that there's this underlying array. And, uh, and if you wanted to work with this in a way where, hey, I needed to change um, you know, values in one slice and not have it impact the underlying array, you just have to think about that in your programming and find a way to do that where you have you know, two different data structures, two different slices. And, uh, and so that's what you'd need to do. All right, so that's a, a little bit about the underlying array uh, the sli it, it with slices, slices underlying array.